Hi everybody, my name is Doug Wilson, and this is Yellowhawk Customs Outdoors. And we are getting ready to venture out and begin the fall, the annual fall Yellowhawk Customs Outdoors rendezvous. Right? So keeping it, keep the whiner and I. The whiner and I are getting ready to drive up to the trailhead so we can meet everyone on the Appalachian Trail. Not going to be a lot of people with this one, I'm sure. Number one, COVID. Number two, not a lot of guys like to come out in cold weather. It's um, getting down into the upper 20s at night around here, so I enjoy it though. Okay, so if you guys uh, stay tuned, we're going to have a pretty good trip, I think. We'll be right back. Kiva, she's going nuts. She's like, Dad, what are we doing? Are we there yet? Are we there yet? Are we there yet? Hey, Kiva. Kiva, no. Here, I'll tell you what, you're a big sissy. We're uh we're going through Gettysburg, Pennsylvania. If any of you guys are familiar with Gettysburg, it's a big Civil War town. Right? You know, a lot of history. Uh, the, one of the bloodiest, actually the bloodiest battle of the Civil War was fought in Gettysburg. They call it Bloody Lane. I can't remember how many guys were killed on each side, but it was a lot. War sucks, dudes. So we're going through Gettysburg. We're on our way to the Appalachian Trail. This is a cool town. I love it here, especially in the fall. It's absolutely beautiful. You see the uh, the leaves on the trees are turning. They, well, they've been turning now for a month, but they're not all off the trees yet. I mean, they're they're probably a, a quarter of the way through the the fall off phase. But real pretty, real pretty area during the fall. This is my favorite time of year to go backpacking, camping and backpacking. Um, fall and winter. But fall just, it, it holds a special place in my heart because when I was younger, this is when Bob um, and I used to come out this, this season, fall. Uh, and he was a he was a scout leader when I was a kid. So he, we're 15 years apart. So really, really cool place. I love it, Gettysburg. Appalachian Trail. Good walking. <clears throat> yeah, I know it's getting cold when I start sniffling. <laughs> I'm headed into Tom's Run from the trailhead. I don't know, I'm thinking it's about a mile, mile and a half. It's, the sun is actually going down right now. 
So I don't know if I'm going to have enough light to set up my camp. Uh, I'm the first one here, I'm sure. Uh, John and Caitlin are supposed to come tomorrow, and Bob is supposed to come tomorrow, and Dave, and Doc. It's going to be chilly at night, into the upper 20s. During the day, it's in the 40s and 50s, which is actually perfect. <clears throat> I'm sporting the uh, Granite Gear Crown 60 Ultralight Backpack. I like it because it can take a lot of winter gear. As long as it's lightweight winter gear. Can't be anything too bulky. But it's, it's a trade-off. If you want lightweight, you got to spend the money. There she is. This is the official halfway point of the Appalachian Trail. It's in Pennsylvania. 1,090.5 miles to Springer Mountain, Georgia. And the same distance to Mount Katahdin, Maine. At Baxter State Park. Cool, huh? And there's the mailbox for the halfway point, in case anybody wants to leave any messages. <laughs> Whew. All right. It's a pretty good hike. It's like 40 degrees, and I'm sweating my buns off. <clears throat> All right. Time to, I'm not going to put the tarp up yet, not yet, I'll probably wait till tomorrow, it's not supposed to rain tonight, so I'll keep it handy just in case. The... All right, let's get let's get the uh, big quilt out. This is uh these are both made by War Bonnet, and the one that I just put on is the under quilt. That's a zero degree, oh, and then it, I got it overstuffed too for winter. And then this is the Diamondback quilt, zero degree overstuffed. So this will take me down to about minus 10 if I, if I had to, but <laughs> that's a little chilly.
Perfect. Perfect. Yep. So she usually sleeps on this blue pad right here. It's just a piece of insulate that she carries on her backpack. And then two uh, wool blankets. One of them's a black wool blanket, the other one's a fleece, I think. Very nice. I slept like a baby last night. Like un beb. Here she comes. Hey, Keith. Kiva, you hungry? Yeah, I'm always hungry. Yeah, this is a cool place. I like it. There's my guard dog. <laughs> There's the stream. Look at all this gear. John and Caitlin are here from Tennessee. Dave from Virginia. Pennsylvania. And Pennsylvania and Maryland. <laughs> Kiva from the dog kennel. Dog hmm. It's always cool when people start setting everything up. There's like gear strewn for miles. <laughs> That's a cool area. I already got a headlamp here. <laughs> you brought your headlamp? Still unprepared. I am dug them double pack. Don't know what I got. That's what that's what happens when you pack I'm quickly. Alright, so I get this question a lot, okay? And you wouldn't believe how often I get this question, and I've answered it probably ten times over the years on my videos on Yellowhawk Customs Outdoors on my YouTube channel, right? So, how do you wear your knife when you're in the field? Okay, so when I'm camping or backpacking or something like that, right? This is how I do it. Okay? Now, I wear... It's just a regular pair of Dickies suspenders. And you can do this with any type of suspender. I wear suspenders out here in the field because they keep your pants up. It's a no-brainer, right? Especially when you're backpacking. I hate it when my pants are migrating down around my, my butt cheeks, right, as I hike. Well, suspenders prevents that, okay? So, and I also, what I do is I will put, you can see how it's on there, right? This is a good draw right here, okay? Very good draw. Real simple, real convenient, really effective, okay? So, all I do is I take an ulti clip. It has to be an ulti clip in this particular situation because the ulti clip grabs the suspenders, both straps together, okay? And you see, this is just a mini ulti clip, just a small one, okay? You can, you, you can use a bigger one for this as well. I've done that, okay? When you push the bail down... It locks the clip onto the suspender. So you just take it, gather them together, make sure they're both in there. They don't, it doesn't have to go all the way through the clip, okay? And then push the plunger down and you're good, okay? You, you can run, you can jog, you can hike, you can roll around the ground with your girlfriend, whatever, okay? This isn't coming off of here, all right? So, and then you got a good, nice draw. You got a knife right there when you need it at whatever time. Okay? That's usually how I wear a belt knife in the field. Okay? Uh, sometimes I'll wear it on my hip in cross draw. But this is, most of the time, this is the way I carry it. It's, this is the most convenient. Okay? If you want to wear it as a dangler, okay, I can set your, your sheath up to be worn as a dangler as well, okay? 
This is a Raptor dangler assembly. Raptor dangler assembly, right? And it unclips from the clip. Just take it off. It can, this can remain on your belt, right? And then you got a whole nother carry, you know, in, in belt carry with the belt clip, okay? And I'm pretty sure, although I never tried it, but I'm pretty sure that this suspender thing will work with a tech lock too. I just, I've never tried it, so don't, you know, you might want to try it, <clears throat> okay? This is the new Delta Whiskey Infinity CPM 3V. We're doing a new run of these right now. LT Wright is gearing up to make me a bunch of these uh, for guys who pre-ordered them, all right? There's the sheath. Now, this one's mine. This is my sheath. I set it up with a Raptor dangler for the field because it's a little too big to wear on suspenders. So this one I wear pretty much right, in the, right on my thigh on my belt as a dangler. And that, that works pretty good for me. Okay, so there's two really simple ways to carry your knife in the field. All right, it's lunch time. And for lunch, we have, and all of this goes in a 16 ounce Tervis insulated cup, okay? This is the best cup I've found yet for field use. It keeps hot things hot and cold things cold. And in the winter, when it's 10 degrees outside, you can actually pour boiling water into it without it cracking. I've tried a lot of different ones, but this is the only... Tervis is the only ones I haven't cracked yet. So we got a cup of we got a cup of noodles. I got uh, some chives and some garlic, a little bit of special sauce, and a little bit of cheese sauce, Velveeta cheese sauce. This is going to be burgers. And we're cooking it on the BRS, that titanium stove that weighs like half an ounce. <laughs> you get them on Amazon. BRS stove. Yes, it's from China. <coughs> and I'm cooking it in a Snow Peak 750 mil titanium pot with lid, of course. Dave's got his. Ubenheimer stove going. See that one? Mm. Oh, this is going to be a hard one. Uh oh, it went off. Yep. It did? Yeah. No, just the screen went off. Is the is the front light still beeping? Yeah. Okay. That goes off to save the battery. Uh. Oh. Here we go. Three hours. <laughs> okay, so let's cook a meal in the backcountry on a backpacking stove. Okay, here's the stove. Now, the stove is a BRS titanium stove. You can get them on Amazon. They're like, I don't know, $16. I've been using this thing for a year, maybe. And it hasn't failed me yet. It's a nice little stove for 16 bucks. And it weighs like 
a half an ounce. It's crazy light. Puts out a lot of heat though. Okay. So there's the stove. Got the Snow Peak 750 milliliter titanium pot. Now all this is lightweight backpacking gear. All right. And I'm going to, everything I cook goes in this cup right here. And I add hot water to it. That's how I do it. So let's cook a meal. All right. So couscous. Love my couscous. A little bit of that. I just eyeball everything. I eat something different for every meal, but I do love couscous. Ooh. A little bit more. All right, that's good. Doesn't take much. It blows up a lot. The seasoning packet. I just put everything in a Ziploc baggie. Uh, just eyeball. I've been doing this a long time, so usually comes out pretty good. Put that back. And whenever I get, you know, food, I always put it in these Ziploc baggies. Just makes everything lighter weight. You're not carrying around packaging. Um, now, sometimes I do keep it in the original package. Just because it's just more convenient to do that way. And then most of the time I just burn my trash while I'm out here. Okay. I don't want any eco-friendlies blowing up my comment section. So you can't burn that trash out there. <laughs> Alright. There we go. Got that in. Now I'm going to add a little bit of this. Eggs and bacon. Just a little. Doesn't take much, just enough to get some egg in there, a little bit of bacon. The bacon migrates to the bottom, so there we go. Close it up. These got Ziploc baggies now, these mountain house meals, so they're easy to pack. And I keep these in the original package because you can add water to this bag. So, works pretty good. And I got a little bit of ramen. <clears throat> a little ramen. Eh, I don't think I'm putting anything else in it. Tuna, maybe. Alright, there we go. Like that. Put the rest of the flavor packet in. These are really good. These, uh, Sapporo Ichiban. They're, they're different than regular oodles and noodles. They're good. And then I'm going to put some special sauce and seasonings in there if I can find it. Okay. We'll see. I need to okay. A little special sauce. This is my secret ingredient. Nobody finds out. Secret ingredient. Special sauce. 
There's that. A little bit of garlic and spring onion. Red pepper. Mm -hmm. And a little bit of sugar. There we go. Okay. All right, let's start the stove. All right, I got my water. I'm going to start the stove. Run the ceramic on it first, very lightly. Just to make sure you don't have water in there. I always use a windscreen. I made this one, okay? Out of um, an MSR windscreen that you can buy. All this stuff you can buy on Amazon. All of it. Or eBay, right? So this is an MSR windscreen that I modified to fit this system and you know you got the uh, snow peak titanium this is 750 mil just enough for one person it'll do two in a pinch all right so there it is I just added the hot water stirred up real good and I'm telling you this is the best backpacking meal Oh, full of carbs good stuff and it tastes good I won't eat food that doesn't taste good uh, now I'll let that sit for 15 minutes and it will still be hot this is a Tervis insulated mug 16 ounce This is Bob's new project. It's a polk. P-U-L-K, polk. Now it should be used in the snow, but it works here too. And the sled itself was only 35 bucks at Ace Hardware. So, you know, eventually you're gonna get a hole in the bottom with dragging over rocks, so you can just buy another one. Or double them up, right. It works good. He did all that, he, he set that whole thing up himself. Alright. Okay, so as is the custom, we found another, another through hiker on the Appalachian Trail, and he's late. <laughs> so he's going to freeze his butt off in the Smokies. <laughs> so we got Possible, that's his trail name. Yes. How are you guys, man? This is so cool. You think you like that? Yeah. Wow. You, it, this, I'll put this on my YouTube channel. So let's take a look at his gear. We're not going to like unpack anything, but <laughs> this, this is typically what you would see a through hiker carrying. Something like this. An ultralight pack with a minimal suspension. But does that thing still ride on your hips and all? This one? Yeah. Yeah? yeah. Okay. It can, man. Because mine is just like, the suspension on my Crown 60 is just like that. Yeah, that's why and, I like it. Yeah, it barely rides on my hips, though. <laughs> I'm real bony. I know, you got yeah. hips. So, yeah. And he's cooking on a lightweight stove, got a lightweight sleeping bag. You know, this is typically what you see. This this pack is made by Hyperlite out of uh, a fabric called Dyneema. It's like fabric Teflon. <laughs> yeah. Neat stuff, man. Yeah. So he said, it, with food and water, his pack is usually anywhere from 30 to 40 pounds. Yeah. Is that right? Yeah. Yeah. It always varies, you know, especially with this cold weather, man. Yeah, and you're not going to get away with much less than that. Not in yeah. cold weather. Yeah. Yeah. If you want to stay warm, it's the main priority. Definitely. Uh, there's a someone in the logbook door, the Explorer, actually almost froze to death. 
because she because she was too light it's a shame you know and she has a lot of trail experience like triple crown almost man she's this a is triple a crown or oh. almost almost man she's like a lot of trails what's your dog doing man she right now this is what we call the waiting for the bus sit sitting down thing <laughs> she's waiting for the bus that's so funny yeah she's she cracks me up she likes to sit in the sun and you know with the sun at her you know it's shining in her face yeah. she likes to do it but right now she's listening to see what she can go chase oh. that's what she's doing she's looking and listening and as soon as something moves out there she's like Pew. <laughs> that's so funny yeah she's a trip Oh, my God.